Hold on to your seats, F1 fans. A shocking revelation has just come to light. Helmut Marko, the man behind Red Bull's junior program, has been caught in secret talks with none other than Fernando Alonso. As rumours swirl, the F1 world is buzzing with speculation about what this could mean for Red Bull's future and Alonso's next move. Marco, who played a key role in discovering talents like Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel, might be cooking up something big. In a Red Bull video, Helmut Marco reflected on the success of their talent programme. We've had Grand Prix winners like Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly, the 81-year-old Austrian said. Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel were also part of our junior team, but their journey was slightly different. We spotted them early, even before the selection phase. Marco explained that the program involves very young drivers, often coming straight from karting without any experience in a Formula car. It's about how quickly they adapt to a Formula car, how fast they improve, and how well they perform in qualifying simulations, he said. They only get one or two laps with new tyres in the Formula car. All of these factors are tested, simulated, and then analysed. Red Bull discussion with Alonso. At the Red Bull driver search programme, senior advisor Helmut Marko shared a behind-the-scenes look at how the team first discovered big names like Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. Marco recalled a key moment when Red Bull considered offering a seat to Fernando Alonso, but founder Dietrich Mateschitz chose instead to focus on developing their talent. Held in early August, this program gives young drivers a shot at joining the prestigious Red Bull junior team. Marco, who has been a guiding force behind the junior program for years, led the event. This year, 11 young hopefuls, aged between 13 and 16, came from a range of countries, including the UK, Ireland, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Sweden, Lebanon and Mexico to showcase their skills. Speaking at the three-day event in Jerez, Spain, where these young drivers competed in open-wheel F4 and GP3 cars, Marco reflected on the success of the programme in a Red Bull video. We've had Grand Prix winners like Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly come through this programme, he said focusing on the importance of nurturing talent from an early stage, just as they did with Verstappen and Vettel. Further, he shared how Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel were also part of the Red Bull junior team, but their journey was unique. Max and Sebastian were brought in a bit differently, Marco explained. They weren't contracted during the selection phase, but rather during the observation phase. Marco focused on the challenges young drivers face when they first step into a Formula car especially coming straight from karting. These drivers are very young, he noted, and many of them have never driven a Formula car before. It's about how quickly they adapt, how fast they improve, and how well they perform in qualifying simulations. Imagine doing just one or two laps with fresh tyres. It's all tested, simulated, and analysed meticulously. Reflecting on how the Red Bull junior team has evolved over the past 20 years, Marco also touched on an interesting moment in the team's history involving Fernando Alonso. Back then we weren't just sponsors, we were looking for drivers who could become future Grand Prix winners, Marco said. Dietrich Mateschitz, Red Bull's founder, was clear about his vision. We were in talks with Fernando Alonso, but Dietrich insisted, we don't buy stars, we make them ourselves. That philosophy is a part of Mateschitz's legacy, and it continues to drive us today. One of the latest successes of this philosophy is Fionn McLaughlin, a 16-year-old from Derry, Ireland, who was the first to secure a spot on the Red Bull junior team during this selection process. After impressing the team, McLaughlin is set to move from karting to compete in an F4 series next season, marking the next step in his racing journey. Marco, Red Bull was in negotiations with Alonso. Red Bull's senior advisor, Helmut Marco, said how much things have evolved since Red Bull Racing and the Red Bull Junior team started their journey over 20 years ago. We weren't just sponsors anymore, Marco explained. We became sponsors who expected our drivers to have the potential to become future Grand Prix winners. This shift in approach was strongly influenced by Red Bull's founder, Dietrich Mateschitz. Marco recalled a pivotal moment when they were in talks with Fernando Alonso. At the time, 
Dietrich made it clear that we don't buy stars, we create them ourselves, Marco said. That philosophy is part of Mateschitz's lasting legacy, and it embodies the visionary and spirited approach he brought to the team. Why did Fernando Alonso never sign for Red Bull alongside Max Verstappen? Despite multiple discussions with Red Bull over the years, Fernando Alonso was never signed by the team and it seems he never will be. Helmut Marko, Red Bull's senior advisor, explained that the decision boiled down to concerns about team harmony, particularly about Max Verstappen. Alonso has engaged in talks with Red Bull several times, with the most recent discussions happening earlier this year before he committed to Aston Martin. There was even a round of talks that involved Red Bull's top engineer, Adrian Newey. However, the potential Alonso Verstappen partnership never came to fruition. Marco elaborated on the reasoning behind this, stating, A harmonious work environment is crucial for Max, and I don't think that would have been possible with Alonso. He pointed out the stark differences in their personalities and approaches. Alonso, a two time world champion, and Verstappen, a triple world champion, are from different generations with distinct mindsets. Marco noted, Alonso and Max are both exceptional drivers, but they are very different. Alonso is older and from a different era, and they have opposing ways of doing things. For example, Alonso doesn't engage in sim racing or hop into a simulator right after a Grand Prix as Max might. Given their competitive nature, Marco believes it would be challenging to foster a positive and productive team dynamic with both drivers. When it comes to who's faster, neither is modest, managing that in a team would be extremely difficult. With this, the question arises whether Fernando Alonso doubts Red Bull's potential to win championships. It seems so, at least according to Helmut Marko. The Red Bull senior advisor revealed that in the early days of Red Bull racing, Alonso didn't believe the team had what it took to build cars capable of winning titles. Marco reflected on those early conversations, saying, We were talking to Alonso in the early years, but I don't think he thought we could manufacture cars that could compete for world championships. And that didn't work out. Since those days, Red Bull has proven its critics wrong, amassing seven drivers' championship titles and six constructors' titles, with more on the horizon this season. Alonso, now committed to Aston Martin, was asked about these past conversations with Red Bull. Rumour had it that he was either considered as a replacement for Sergio Perez or potentially for Max Verstappen if the Dutch driver moved to Mercedes. However, Alonso remained tight-lipped about the specific teams he was in talks with. I did speak with other people as well, Alonso mentioned, noting that it's common to explore all options during negotiations. When you enter negotiations, you need to balance what the market offers. It's just a normal procedure. While Alonso didn't disclose which teams he had discussions with, he emphasised that Aston Martin felt like the logical choice for his future. I will not be specific about which teams I spoke to as I think this is not important now. But yeah, it's a normal conversation to have, Alonso added, explaining that both drivers and teams routinely explore all options before making decisions. Alonso says, Newey's exit doesn't mean the Red Bull team is imploding. When asked about the impact of Adrian Newey's potential departure amid Red Bull's internal issues, Fernando Alonso downplayed the concern, saying, I don't think so. Red Bull has been dominating since 2021, and when something happens outside the race weekend, it generates a lot of news. Alonso noted that the team's dominance makes any change within their ranks more newsworthy than similar events at other teams. They are the ones everyone wants to beat, so any disruption in their setup attracts more attention. Aston Martin owner Lawrence Stroll has shown interest in Newey, even making a verbal offer, but Newey has been more closely linked to Ferrari. Alonso expressed his admiration for Newey, saying, I've always wanted to work with him, once in my life. I respect him a lot. He's probably the best Formula One has ever had. A legend of the sport. Alonso feels privileged to be competing in the same era as Newey, regardless of whether a direct collaboration will occur. Alonso added, We are happy with our technical department. Adrian is one of the best, but he needs to fit in with the team. It's more about Lawrence's decision and ultimately Adrian's choice. Newey will leave Red Bull in March 2025 after negotiating an early exit. Until then, 
he will continue working on the RB17 hypercar, but will step back from future car projects and technical developments. So, what do you think of the secret talk of Red Bull with Alonso? Comment below and subscribe for more such videos.